Hello, my name is Bill Kerrigan. I'm a professor of history at Rowan University. Today I'm here to talk to you about Ronald Reagan's rise to prominence, especially sparked by his uh, famous speech, A Time for Choosing. In the 1940s and 1950s, almost no one uh, could have predicted that the actor Ronald Reagan would ever become president of the United States. Not only did actors not become presidents, but Reagan had even gone through a divorce, which was uh, considered disqualifying for presidents at the time. Reagan would, of course, change that. Um, Reagan had grown up in Illinois, and he was a fan of President Roosevelt in his youth and the New Deal. Um, and as he mentions in his speech, he had actually remained a Democrat all the way until 1962. How then did this uh, one-time Democrat actor become the Republican nominee for president eventually, and then one of the most beloved Republicans of the entire 20th century, certainly up there with Dwight Eisenhower? Although... Uh, never a leading man as an actor, uh, Ronald Reagan was, in fact, fairly well known. Um, in addition to his Hollywood films, he'd also made 400 films uh, while he was served in the Army uh, training films. But it was actually one particular role uh, that really um, brought him to kind of real fame. And that was when he became the host of General Electric Theater. That was a Sunday evening anthology uh, show uh, that used to be quite popular uh, in the early days of television. It was paid for completely by General Electric, and General Electric's contract with Reagan required that not only they host the show on Sundays, but that also that he tour General Ele Electric facilities and factories. And in fact, over the next eight years after he started there in 1954, Reagan would have would, would go to 135 different facilities and give talks at each and every one of those. Uh, it was during this period uh, that Reagan began to turn towards conservatism. Um, uh, he would, uh, uh, when he was giving these talks, uh, he, he found that he was responding to rapidly changing events, uh, in the country and his own encounters with GE, uh, individual, uh, um, managers and executives, but also the ordinary people that he met at the factory. And all of these, uh, this kind of interactions ended up, uh, shaping his views uh, and moving him towards conservatism. Uh, as he gave his talks, he actually was able to, he wrote them all himself, and he was able to kind of start to test out some of his new changing ideas, especially his opposition to communism, but also his opposition to uh, liberal social programs that um, folks like John Kennedy were advocating expanding. And um, by the time that he changed his official party position in 1962, he was already a committed uh, conservative. So anyway, many people uh, knew who Reagan was from General Electric Theater and, and his films, uh, but they didn't know a lot about his political beliefs unless you had happened to go to one of these uh, talks at these GE facilities. Uh, but that changed in 1964 when he campaigned on behalf of Barry Goldwater. Barry Goldwater uh, was a uh, an ideologically very conservative Republican who had won the nomination um, uh, very much to the delight of the right wing of the Republican Party in 1964. And Reagan was enthusiastically supporting uh, Goldwater and he gave a number of speeches. His most famous one was one that appeared on television. It was called A Time for Choosing. It appeared on October the 27th. Uh, it electrified uh, many people who saw it, but especially, of course, conservatives. One key element of Reagan's speech was his defense of small government. He said that the government can only control the economy by controlling people. And when it does that, it actually eliminates the personal freedoms that the country had been created to protect in the first place. The other theme of his speech was the struggle with communism, which he considered to be an all-out war that allowed no compromise. Um, this powerful speech uh, came too late to help Goldwater. In fact, it's unclear if anything could have really helped Goldwater win that election against the very popular Lyndon Johnson at the time. Uh, but it did bring him to the attention of Republican leadership, and they asked him to run for the governorship of California, which is where Reagan had moved after growing up in Illinois. Uh, Reagan accepted, and he won the governorship in 1966. Then he won re-election in 1970. He got greater national recognition during this time for his uh, opposition to student protest and welfare expansion. Um, Nixon's rise uh, kind of uh, stymied Reagan's hopes to become the the presidential nominee, uh, but eventually uh, Reagan was able to uh, become the nominee in 1980. And when he did, he won uh, decisively in 1980 and then in a, uh, a fantastically great landslide in 1984 where he won all but one state. Um, 
Reagan had transformed politics greatly. In fact, um, he so transformed politics that the Democrats uh, could own, did, did not win. They had won, um, you know, many elections prior, but they, they could not defeat Reagan. They did not defeat his successor, George H.W. Bush. They only were able to triumph in 1992 when, a, when Ross Perot ran a third party candidate, but more particularly because Bill Clinton was able to adopt some of uh, and co-opt some of Reagan's ideas about the economy and the government and social programs. For example, in 1996, uh, Clinton in his State of the Union address declared, quote, the era of big government is, is over. Now, that's a statement that would have shocked previous Democratic leaders who had since FDR been fans of expanding government with more programs to help uh, alleviate various different issues. And uh, what I would like to argue is just as the acceptance of New Deal programs by Republican Dwight Eisenhower cemented those programs like Social Security and American Life, uh, Bill Clinton's acceptance of some of the key tenets of Reagan's philosophy, especially the idea that government is not the solution to all problems, uh, that indicated that certain conservative ideas had become part of modern American culture. Thank you very much. It's been Bill Kerrigan for Rowan University. Have a great day.